Man, this never ends. I need to reach out to the president and warn him about the Ouroboros project. Hmm. The nightmare's not over yet. Who would have suspected that Tricell was behind Will Pharma? There must be a way to warn the nation. I'm going to head to the headquarters of Unwired TV and reach out to them before another Raccoon City incident happens again. How you doing? It's Paul Mercier. And this is an exclusive top secret interview for Unwired TV. Exclusive. Now, like a lot of people that I know, uh, actors primarily start in the theater because that's where you kind of create whatever you can imagine in an empty space. And the people, the audience, can see what you're imagining in this empty space as well. Um, when I came out to Hollywood, I mean, I, I, I don't think anybody thinks, oh, gee, I think I want to be a voice actor. Although it has happened before. Uh, me, I wanted to just, you know, see what was out here, uh, especially in, in, in feature film and, and TV. And when I started booking commercials and, uh, and, and some, uh, some animated shows and, and all of a sudden video games were starting to really catch on, uh, I was working with some really incredible people who were pioneers in the field. I mean, this is when we had, what, like 8-bit, you know, files that you know, you'd scream or something after falling down a well, and I'd be like, no, you know what? We have to make it shorter because we only have, you know, 612 kilobytes for this file. Um, and then to watch it develop and to, and, 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 and to watch the technology just sort of chase the imagination of some of these people that are working today, it's outrageous. That's why I'm looking forward to the future. It's better than looking backward to the future. What were you thinking? What's interesting to me is my career has uh, sort of taken so many different uh, morphings and... Uh, morphings? No. My career has had so many different shapes and uh, wonderful things to it. Uh, I've never really dialed into one particular genre of anything because, um, I don't know, I, maybe it's because I have ADD. My, one of my favorite games to do, uh, one of my favorite characters was, uh, was Spectre in SOCOM uh, for, our, for the... Uh, for the U.S. Navy SEALs, SOCOM 2. And uh, we did, gosh, I don't know how many games you can, you probably know better than I do, uh, but that lasted about uh, eight or nine years. So to be able to watch how Spectre grew um, and his ability to, you know, think clearly and give orders in specific situations. In fact, some of the, some of the biggest fans of, of SOCOM are actual U.S. Navy SEALs themselves. So. That tells you something right there. Ooh. Onimusha 3. Um, I am Jean Reno. But uh, you probably knew that already. Um, I'm not Jean Reno, actually. However, I pick up where he leaves off, because... Uh, he picks me up. Picks me up before you go, go. And I don't like it in the show. Oh. Um... Now, you know what? I didn't bring my resume here. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know who you are. Why do you, why, why do you want to do this to me? <laughs> oh, you got to get from here. My experience with Capcom is similar to this interview. I think that They've put you up to this. But uh, basically, you know, Chris Zimmerman was the casting director. Well, she still is. Uh, but she's really well known for her excellence in directing. Uh, I can't hold on much longer, so let me just tell you this right now. She was the original one who cast the demo for Resident Evil 4. So I came in and worked with Gordon Hunt. And we... We worked on all sorts of things because the virus was allegedly to take Leon over and, and it was going to come out of his arm and whoosh, whip. His arm was going to turn into a 15-foot snake and it was going to be so painful. There was nothing to be 
live through, and it would eventually kill Leon! But... But they didn't like that too much, so they, like, threw it out. But they kept me. So I'm like, okay, cool. When's the next game? <laughs> yes, what else would you like to know? A lot of uh, uncredited voices here and there, and, well, everywhere. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. What are you selling? What are you buying? Is that it? I can't even remember. Got a lot of good things for you, stranger. What are you selling? What are you buying? What are you buying? Uh, not enough cash! Well, you know, there's a lot of inspiration um, that I get. Oh my god, I didn't know you were going to come so close to me. Um, we just met. But if you really want to know, the inspiration uh, to carry on is pretty much my family um, because what was really starting to happen and which I think is really cool is uh, my my kids start you know playing these games and uh, you know okay so they're a little young but what's a zombie gonna do to you really I mean it's on TV <laughs> like they think the TV's real <laughs> oh and that's why they don't sleep very well but, in any event, I get them to play so that I watch, so it becomes like a movie. So, the more that I can keep, you know, working like this, and the more that they, you know, stay out of school, and the more that uh, our society just, you know, breeds these kinds of kids that, that, that will just suck knowledge from the television like it's a, like it's a glass teat. That's Harlan Ellison, by the way, it's not me. But you know what I mean? Sitting on the couch and you can just get it all, man. It's good. <laughs> Allison, uh, this one's for you. And Karen, too. Uh, we had such a great time working together because we were never in the same room, were we? Um, you know, what's what's fun about doing animation for television in a lot of situations is you know you're there with the whole cast so oftentimes it's really difficult to get through the script because everybody's just there to make each other laugh and it's very serious business because you know you got to take your comedy seriously otherwise it's not funny but you understand that when you're doing a video game though you're pretty much in the dark by yourself so you thought that I was kidding but all that time that you spend alone in the dark is going to pay off one day, pal, let me tell you. Not. Um, so Allison actually didn't come down off of her throne in Canada. And uh, other people's schedule, you know, conflicts. Uh, I was in Siberia for about 30 years. And after five years of rehabilitation, I was actually able to you know come out into the sunlight again but it still hurts me um, but at least my skin color has you know started to come back a little bit I was still a little green but we put all these things together in in post-production or what we do with Allison for instance or if somebody else can't make a session uh, we can do it via ISDN um, or Source Connect which is over the internet because that's a really cool thing that's recently developed. I've just heard about it. Um, you can actually get files from somebody else's computer who's miles away from you, even from Australia. Every day, baby, 
Yeah, what happened to Sherry? Did she drown in the sewer? Is she a sex slave in an underground, undisclosed location? Ah, wouldn't you like to know? No, she's not. 